So we continue with the anatomy of back of thigh and uh, popliteal fossa. I'm Dr. Ominde. So um, the back of the thigh, the back of the thigh has um, four main muscles, which we call the hamstring muscles. These are made up of biceps femoris, semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and there's a part of adductor magnus. These are mainly supplied by the perforating branches of the profunda femoris artery, which is a deep branch of the femoral artery. And they are supplied by the sciatic nerve, where all of them are supplied by the tibial branch of sciatic nerve, except the short head of biceps femoris that's supplied by the common peroneal branch of sciatic nerve. So um, you need to remember that detail for in the sake of your MCQs. So, the four muscles, semimembranosa, semitendinosa, biceps femoris, and um, small and small part of adductor magnus are the hamstring muscles, and they are innervated by um, sciatic nerve, as we have said, all of them tibial nerve, except the short head of biceps, which is by common peroneal nerve. Then they all come from the ischial tuberosity, again, except the short head of biceps, which is on the linear spur of the femur. So those are the common things about the hamstring muscles. So biceps femoris originates from ischial tuberosity. That's the long head and the short head on the linear spur and part of the lateral supracondylar ridge on the shaft of the femur. Okay, then the biceps femoris inserts onto the head of the fibula. So what's the innervation? Long head is by tibial nerve and short head by common peroneal branch of sciatic. Biceps femoris causes um, extension at the thigh, the long head. Remember, it's from ischial tuberosity, so it crosses the hip joint. It will cause extension of the thigh at the hip joint. And both the long and the short head cross the knee, so they will cause flexion at the knee. Semitendinosis originates from ischial tuberosity, as we have said, and inserts on the medial surface, the upper superior medial surface, actually, superior medial surface of the tibial shaft. Remember, semitendinosus together with sartorius and gracilis will form a pes and serine, sort of looking like a duck's foot on the superior medial surface of the tibial shaft. So semitendinosus, that's the insertion point. All hamstring muscles are innervated by tibial branch of sciatic nerve, except the short head of uh, biceps, which is by common peroneal. Semitendinosus crosses the hip and the knee. So it causes extension at the hip and causes flexion at the knee and there's also some aspect of medial rotation at the knee because it inserts on the medial aspect of the tibia causing medial rotation of the leg. Semimembranosis, all hamstring muscles originate from ischial tuberosity apart from short head of biceps which is from linear aspera and the lateral supracondylar ridge. Semimembranosis inserts on the posterior medial surface of the condyle, medial condyle of tibia, posterior medial surface of the medial condyle of tibia and it sends fibrous expansion to the back of the knee, so it forms the oblique popliteal ligament. So semimembranosus forms oblique popliteal ligament. All hamstring muscles are supplied by tibial branch of sciatic, except short head of biceps by common peroneal. Again, it crosses both the hip and the knee, so it causes extension of the hip and flexion of the knee. And because it inserts on the medial surface of the medial condyle of tibia, there's some aspect of medial rotation of the knee joint. The hamstring portion of adductor magnus originates from mistral tuberosity and inserts on the adductor tubercle of the femur. It's mainly innervated by the tibial portion of sciatic nerve and causes extension at the hip joint. It does not cross the knee, so it only extends at the hip. What is the blood supply of the hamstring muscles? The four perforators from the profunda femoris artery or the deep artery of the thigh. So profunda femoral femoris artery is usually accompanied by profunda femoris vein. So sciatic nerve, remember, as we had discussed, that it has a root value of L4, L5, S1 to S3 from the sacral plexus, and it passes from the infrapiriformic portion of the greater sciatic foramen and we find it midway between ischial tuberosity and greater trochanter, then passes deep to the long head of biceps, and at the superior border of popliteal fossa, it divides into a medial tibial nerve and a lateral common peroneal nerve. So the tibial nerve enters the popliteal fossa, okay? And the common peroneal nerve will enter popliteal fossa and immediately goes onto the lateral side 
where you find it near the head of the so the tibial nerve innervates the long head of biceps femoris semitendinosa semimembranosus and hamstring part of adductor magnus while common peroneal will innervate the short head of the biceps femoris okay so um Within um, the popliteal fossa, now we can discuss the popliteal fossa. It's the diamond shaped um, intermuscular space located at the back of the knee. Diamond shaped intermuscular space at the back of the knee and usually very prominent when the knee is flexed. So you need to know what are the boundaries, what are the contents and the applied anatomy of the popliteal fossa. So laterally, you have the biceps femoris above and below you have the lateral head of gastrocnemius and plantaris. So superior laterally, biceps femoris, inferior laterally, lateral head of gastrocnemius and plantaris. Superior medially, you have semimembranosus and semitendinosus, while inferior medially, you have the medial head of gastrocnemius. Okay, so those are on the medial aspect. Superior laterally, biceps femoris, inferior laterally, lateral head of gastrocnemius and plantaris. Superior medially, semitendinosus and semimembranosus, inferior medially the medial head of gastrocnemius how do you know this is medial and this is lateral look at common peroneal it goes laterally and this is your tibial now this tendinous portion is semitendinosus this fleshy one is semimembranosus and these are the two heads of biceps femoris this is your achilles tendon that holds onto your two heads of gastrocnemius and soleus they all come onto the achilles tendon so the anterior wall or rather the floor of the popliteal fossa is formed by popliteal surface of femur then we have the capsule of the knee joint or the posterior ligament of the knee joint and popliteus muscle so you have popliteal surface of femur above then at the knee joint you have capsule of the knee joint then below the popliteus muscle so those are the three structures forming the floor of the popliteal fossa and the roof is formed by skin superficial fascia and the deep fascia so Popliteus muscle is a very important muscle. It usually originates from the lateral surface of the lateral condyle of femur. So if this is your femur on the lateral surface of the condyle of femur, that's where the tendon, rounded tendon of popliteus originates. It has a few fibers from also the semilunar cartilage, which is the lateral meniscus. Insertion point of the popliteus muscle is on the posterior surface of the tibia above the soleal line so this is your popliteus muscle from the lateral surface of the uh, from the surface of the lateral condyle here lateral surface of the lateral condyle of femur then it comes to insert on the posterior surface of the tibia above the soleal line your soleal line is somewhere here so this is your muscle popliteus okay that one here so it's usually innervated by tibial nerve and causes medial rotation of the tibia on the femur medial rotation of the tibia on the femur so how is this important um you can also say it causes lateral rotation of the femur on tibia so whichever now that comes in to the aspect of locking and unlocking of the knee what is locking of the knee remember the uh, medial condyle of the femur is narrower and longer so during extension from a flexed knee position as you extend the lateral condyle, which is shorter, will complete um, uh, the extension faster before the medial condyle. The medial condyle of femur is longer. So now the femur is forced to rotate. It has to rotate medially onto the tibia to complete the extension at the, on the medial aspect because the medial condyle is longer. So that's what we call locking of the knee. So locking of the knee is the medial rotation of the tibia on femur. Locking of the knee is the medial rotation of, sorry, locking of the knee is the medial rotation of the femur on tibia so that the longer femoral condyle can complete um, uh, extension and ensure full extension at the knee joint. But popliteus muscle causes unlocking of the knee. So what is unlocking of the knee? From a complete extended position, when you're standing up straight, your knee is fully extended. From a complete extended position, the femur has to be rotated laterally on the tibia. It has to be rotated laterally on the tibia so that you unlock the knee and allow flexion. So I'll repeat, the femoral condyles 
the medial one is longer than the lateral one, is longer and narrower than the lateral one. So from a flexed position and you fully extend, the lateral which is shorter completes its rotation or rather extends before the um, medial condyles, tibial femoral condyles have full extension. So now the femur is forced to medially rotate onto the tibia to cause locking of the knee at full extension, like when you're standing straight. Unlocking of the knee is where popliteus muscle contracts to cause the femur to rotate laterally on the tibia before the knee can allow flexion. From a fully extended position, you cannot flex until you unlock the knee. And that is where popliteus muscle comes in. Then we have popliteal artery. It's the most anterior structure of the popliteal fossa. So as you open the popliteal fossa, the skin, superficial fascia, deep fascia, then you see your tibial nerve, popliteal vein, then popliteal artery is the most anterior structure close to the bone. So it originates from the adductor hiatus as a continuation of the femoral artery, from the adductor hiatus as a continuation of femoral artery, and terminates on the lower border of the muscle, popliteus by dividing into anterior and posterior tibial arteries. So this is your, um, fem, uh, fem, uh, sorry, your popliteal artery coming down this wing. Okay. So you can see at the lower border of the muscle popliteus, it divides into anterior tibial, uh, anterior tibial here, it's perforated the interosseous membrane to go into anterior compartment of the leg and posterior tibial that will give peroneal artery before it continues as posterior tibial in the posterior compartment of the leg. Popliteal vein, remember it's carrying blood from down upwards. So the vena comitantes, the veins that are following anterior and posterior tibial arteries, they will join and form the popliteal vein. And this occurs at the lower border of the muscle, popliteus. Okay, so at the lower border of muscle popliteus, <laughs> veins following anterior and posterior tibial veins will join to form popliteal vein. Then it carries the blood upwards and terminates at the adductor hiatus as it continues as femoral vein. So this is it. This You have veins that follow anterior tibial and posterior tibial. Together at the lower border of the muscle popliteus, they join and form popliteal vein which goes up and at the adductor hiatus, popliteal vein terminates and it continues as femoral vein. So what are the tributaries of popliteal vein? Usually um, they correspond to the branches of popliteal artery. And remember popliteal artery has branches that will form the genicular anastomosis. So genicular anastomosis is communication of blood vessels around the knee. That's why it's called genicular. So this is usually important clinically because it helps to compensate for narrowing of the popliteal artery during knee flexion. When you flex your knee, the popliteal artery is um, narrowed. So this anastomosis ensures um, continuous blood flow to the distal aspect of the leg. So the genicular anastomosis is formed mainly by um, five branches of the popliteal artery. So you have um, on, okay, so here we are. This is your popliteal artery here okay then you have superior lateral and um superior lateral and superior medial then inferior lateral and inferior medial and then there's a middle so those are the five branches five branches of popliteal lateral superior lateral going to the lateral aspect and superior medial then inferior lateral and inferior medial and there's a middle genicular artery okay so those are the five branches of popliteal artery that participate in the genicular anastomosis but which other vessels femoral also gives a descending genicular artery and the lateral circumflex also gives a descending genicular artery then we also have branches from anterior tibial recurrent and from the peroneal circumflex so all these circumflex fibular branch they form the genicular anastomosis five branches from popliteal artery descending branch genicular from femoral and from lateral circumflex and recurrent from anterior tibial artery and a circumflex from uh, peroneal artery so those form the genicular anastomosis thank you